you all at the glory of I am that I am. Thank you all so very much. Thank you for those who are passing through, subscribing, and for those who are giving. I honor you and I love you so, so very much. Amen and amen. So we've come into a time of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar because I was just meditating on the Lord and I was just discerning that this is the hour that we have to be careful of the very choices that we make. Um, it's a place where, you know, just encouraging each and every one of us that when a counsel is given to you, you have to take it to the Lord and ask him, you know, when a counsel, when a counsel, you know, because a lot of us, we're, we've gotten to a place where we're making decisions and we're making decisions. And most of the decisions that we're making, we're not getting those uh, instructions or the answers to those decisions from the Lord. You know, majority of us will basically go by that scripture that says that what? There is, uh, there is uh, uh, in a multitude of counsel, there is safety. But I want to bring this uh, counsel to you that sometimes that is very wrong because the counsel that you're getting from those multitude whether it's your parents whether it's your husband or your wife or your boss or the people around you friends and things like that they might be the wrong counsel it's not everything that is good that is from god i want to repeat that it's not everything that is good that is from god but everything that is from god is good can you see that dimension? So that means for whatever it is that you're intending to do, be sure. So even though people are giving you counsels, be sure that it is from the Lord. So this is why I'm basically sharing this. Remember the story of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. Yeah, we know that story, right? Now, look at what happened. The Lord gave Abraham a promise. You can see, if you read a few scriptures back, he had a vision where God told him he's going to have a son. You know, God basically showed him the dimension of that relationship and told him, look, look at the stars in the sky. That's how much your descendants are going to be. But eventually Sarah comes along and Sarah was, hey, you know, I have not I have no children. I have no children. I have no children. So you can begin to see that God sometimes can give you a promise, but the people around you can begin to push you to do something that is against the promise of God. And that in itself can cause a whole lot of delays. Can you see that? This is why I said you have to be intentional that whatever anyone gives you, you have to wait on the Lord and ask, Father, is this you? Lord, is this you? Please, you know, if it's a sign that you've got to ask for, ask for a sign. If it's patience that you've got to be patient on, you know, be patient with it, but don't basically go and start making decisions based on people's opinions. The reason is this. Look at Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. You know, in Genesis chapter 16, the Bible tells us that, you know, after Sarah had basically moaned and she said to Abraham, look, I have no children, you know, based on the promise that God had given Abraham, you know, she continued to say to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. And what did Abraham do? Without question, without anything, he decided to obey. <laughs> Can you see that? Against the promise of God, he decided to obey. And then Hagar got pregnant. After now, Hagar got pregnant. Do you know what happened after? Hey, Sarah began to hate this woman. She's basically doing this. She's doing that. She's, you know, look at the Egyptian that you look at the slave that you slept with and began to blame Abraham, <laughs> can you see? He said, look at it. You know, in verse 5, he said, Then Sarah said to Abraham, You're responsible for the wrong I am suffering. Can you see? The same people who gave you the advice. When things go wrong, they are the first set of people to blame you for taking the advice. Can you see that dimension? So it's a place where, you know, then Sarah said to Abraham, you're responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my slave in your arms. And now that she knows she's pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and look at that in itself. May the Lord judge. How can the Lord basically judge what you instigated? You let that person. She led Abraham in the wrong path based on the promise that God has said, hey, you're going to have a child. You put him in the wrong way and then eventually you're blaming him for the consequences that are manifesting through that in itself. So you can begin to see 
that then the angel of the Lord had to go and defend Agar. Don't worry about it. You know, I can see what happened to you. I know it's not fair, but I'm with you. And I promise that your child I will be with. You know, he's also going to inherit promises because he's from Abraham. So you can see that dimension. And eventually, you know, we read all the way down to Genesis 21, I believe, when Sarah eventually chased Hagar. You can see the, <laughs> you can see how, you know, I believe that there's probably a traumatic experience right in that place where Abraham had already what, you know, he had already grown with the child, already with the child, you know, and started loving Ishmael. And then eventually Sarah said, hey, give him, you know, send her away, you know, because I don't want her anywhere near the promise of my child. And Abraham had to basically go to meet God. Lord, you know, this is unfair. Look at, you know, look at what is happening. And eventually what happened? The Lord said, listen to your wife because the promise is going to come through who? Come through Isaac. I mean, so you can see the Lord did not even condemn Abraham. He said, I'm still basically going to wait. You know, the, my promise is going to, still going to be carried out. But look at the consequence of that in itself. Because if you read you know, uh, further on in the chapter, uh, you know, if you read the book of Exodus, if you read the book of Deuteronomy, you can see that it was the descendants of who? Of Ishmael <laughs> coming against the Israelites, you know, time and time again. So you can see in that dimension that every counsel that you're given and you follow it that is not of the Lord, it has consequences. Do you see that? It has consequences. Consequences. It has consequences. Though they gave you that advice and you go after it and then eventually it doesn't turn out the way you expect it to turn out. They blame you for it. Now you can see. Now you're asking the Lord. Maybe that situation now caused a traumatic experience. So think about it. You know, maybe you're basically, let's look at marriage, for example. I want to use that because that is the, that is a common theme, you know, where people you know, most of the time to the grace of God, you will not get, get it wrong in Jesus mighty name. But some people do get it wrong because they say, oh, you know, it was the mother, the father that offered up the husband, the wife. Hey, you know, marry this person. Ah, he's a good man. He's a good this. You know, she's a good woman. She cooks, she cleans. You know, she basically goes to work. She's responsible. Ah, you know that man, he has a good job. He has all of this. And you consider their opinion. Now you get into the marriage. Now things did not turn out the way you expect it to turn out. The person, did not turn out the way you expected them to turn out. Now you're in it. You can't get out of it. You can see the consequences of the decisions of the people. They were there at your wedding. They were rejoicing, dancing with you. They were playing the music. You were there. You know, they did all manner of things. You ate together. You laughed together on that day. But when the problem starts, where are they? Sorry, I'm busy. Sorry, I can't come today. You know, uh, you know, don't worry. We'll pray for you. God will be... <laughs> <laughs> do you see? Do you see that that showdown? We will pray for you. God will be with you. Ah, you know that. You know that's how marriages are. You know you have to go through this. You see how those counsels. You know you go continue to go deeper and deeper in it without not finding a way out of it. So you can see, that is why waiting on the Father is so much more beautiful. You know, no matter what the length of time is, be sure that he who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly is going to do it. He that spoke it, he would eventually bring it to pass. Did he not say to Sarah, you will have a child? Did it not come to pass? It did come to pass. But Sarah was not, you know, she was not basically having, you know, she was not willing to wait on that because, hey, she was looking at her age. She was probably looking at her circumstances and saying, ah, no, not at all. This is not going to happen, you know. So you can see with Adam at the same time, God gave Adam a word. <laughs> God gave Adam a word. And I believe according to the scripture, he shared the word with Eve because when Satan came, Eve basically said, the Lord told us not to eat. So Adam must have told Eve, the Lord said, don't touch this thing. And eventually what happened? Eve ate the fruit. So you can see the testimony that was made in what? In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. And this is what it says, Adam, was first formed than Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Can you see? 
Isn't that the same thing with Abraham? <laughs> Abraham was not the one who was deceived. It was the woman because she was looking at herself. You know, Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was basically, you know, she went with the voice of the serpent and eventually ate. And then both of them was kicked out. So you can see Adam, Abraham basically listened to his wife and eventually look at all that happened, the manifestation of it. And the father is sharing with each and every one of us in this hour that as much as the councils are coming to you, people's advice, people's opinions, whether it be your boss at your place of work, whether it be your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, whatever counsel is coming from you. Remember, they could not get to Jesus. You see, none of them, the Pharisees, the Jews, all of them, they could not get to Jesus directly. They had to go through who? They went through who? <laughs> Judas Iscariot. So most of the time, because they cannot get to you directly to lead you astray, they can go through your father, they can go through your mother, they can go through the children, they can go through who? They can go through your husband or your wife or your boss or your colleague at work or those that you are surrounded with. Hence the reason why the father is encouraging in this hour and it's a place of encouragement. Be careful of the counsels that you are receiving. Be careful for of the words. You know, for some of you, you might, you might not even wait until a word is shared to you. You're there. You're looking on social media. You're looking for counsels from social media, the patterns of the world. You're using the patterns of the world to determine where you're going to be, what you're going to do, where you're going to go. And that is wrong. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind in the word of God. Let the word of God guide you. Order my steps in your word. The Bible says his word is a lamp to your feet and the light that lights your path. So most of the time, when you ask God, is this what I am supposed to do? And you're not receiving an answer. Be patient. Why? Because he's not giving you an answer for now. Maybe because there is something coming and he's trying to prevent you. And he said, I don't want you to move yet. I don't. Have you ever seen <laughs> Lion King? that movie, Lion King. Remember Zazu, when Simba, you know, was trying to teach, uh, 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 when uh, the father uh, uh, was trying to teach Simba how to, you know, how to catch prey. He said, you know, lie down patiently, lie down patiently, quietly, then at the right time, pounce. So you can be, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Isn't that the way the father is? He'll tell you, be patient. Do not be anxious. Be patient. I know you want to move quickly. Be patient. I know you want to do that thing quickly. Be patient. And I'm asking you to be patient. Why? Because I can see something coming along the way and I don't want that to delay or to hinder. So let that pass first before you move in what I have called you to do. So you can see that dimension. This is what the Lord is speaking to you this very moment. Be patient. Be careful of counsels. Be careful of the people who are speaking to you in this hour. Let their words, if they speak it to you, bring it to me. And I will tell you if it's something you should go for or not. Because that word, there is counsel, there is safety in the multitude of counsel, is not always right. Because you're sitting with 12 or 13 or 14 people, they can be speaking the same thing. We've seen this in the book of First Kings. Remember Micaiah and Ahab. All of the problems Prophets were speaking the same thing. But then Micaiah came along and said exactly what God needed to say. And Ahab still did not believe. Put him in jail. And what happened? Eventually, the word came to pass. <laughs> Ahab never made it home. So you can begin to understand it. Because sometimes, one person can be speaking the word and you reject it. And multitude of people are speaking what you want to hear and you're accepting it. That is why the Bible tells us about the itching ear. Can you see? Can you see that dimension? <laughs> it says that what? Because they want to listen to what? Let's read it together. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. And it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will heap up the, upon them, or they will heap to themselves teachers in accordance with their own lusts. So you can see, you will heap on yourself. You know, people will heap up on themselves. You know, this person, I don't like what he's saying. The person might be speaking the truth, but you don't like it. But you go and listen to what you want to listen to. Eventually, cause his delays, cause his traumas, cause, you know, you know, you're, you're now, you're not asking the Lord to heal those places. And then look at that dimension if you had only listened the first time so the father i'm just sharing this encouraging word any counsel that is given to you in this hour that is not of the father and you're not certain of it 
Take it to the Lord. Let him guide you because he doesn't want you to be misled. He doesn't want you to be tossed to and fro. That's why he continues to tell us that bad company corrupts good character. So you can begin to understand because in that dimension, there might be people who are coming, you know, even people in the body, they will tell you this, but the father is saying, hey, you need to be careful because you know why? I don't want you to be delayed. I don't want you to be hindered because of the relationship you and I have. So it is in this place, I beseech you by the mercy that you do what? You take it to the Lord. Allow the Lord to guide, allow the Lord to lead. Yes, so you don't fall into that time because in the last days, it says many will be deceived, even those who are in the body. <laughs> you, you understand that so i bless you with this word because you can see like i said look at what sarah put abraham through it was not fair at all you told him to go and do something and then you blamed him for it it's absolutely unfair and this is what many are falling into in this hour they will tell you to do something and then they will blame you for what you have done can you see that dimension so please my brothers, <laughs> sisters, <laughs> sons of God, <laughs> daughters in Zion, you know, I beseech you, you know, the Bible tells us Isaiah, 5, Isaiah chapter 11, you know, the spirit of counsel is there and he will lead and he will guide you. I love you all. Stay blessed. I just wanted to share that, you know, in this hour. And I believe the Lord will guide and lead and what and direct you in the path that you should go in Jesus mighty name. Love you all. Stay blessed in the presence of the most high. Amen.